Well, if you're a sports fan like I am, you sometimes get really geared up for high-powered matchups, whether it be basketball or baseball or football. These high-powered matchups are, are things that you look forward to. But what's very interesting is sometimes after a very high-powered matchup between two very highly rated teams, and maybe your team comes out on top, they sometimes have what would be called a lull, and they lose to a much lesser opponent the very next week. Why did that happen? Well, I believe sometimes the victories that we are given also lead to our defeats because they lead to a lessening, if you will, of our guard for the very things that we're supposed to be guarding against, whether we're talking about in sports or whether we're talking about our lives. And I think that that's what we're looking at here as we continue to study the life of Gideon. We see great victory that God has established and actually through that great victory comes the comes a sneaky way in which defeat is seeded into this equation. We're going to take a look at that together as we continue our study through the book of Judges. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. It's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God. We invite you on this journey with us by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. You can receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, let's take a look at the life of Gideon. We we are seeing the 300 men had this great victory, and now we're going to see this victory come to its conclusion. Uh, but with that conclusion, we see the seeds of defeat that are sowed into it. Let's take a look at that together. Then when the men of Ephraim said to him, What is it that you've done to us and not call us when you went to fight against Midian? And they accused him, Gideon, fiercely. And he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the grape harvest of Abizir? God has given into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. What have I been able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger against him subsided when he said this. And Gideon came to the Jordan and crossed over, he and the three hundred men who were with him, exhausted yet pursuing. So he said to the men of Sakoth, Please give us loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. And the officials of Sakoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? So Gideon said, Well then, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, I will flail your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And from there he went up to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered. And he said to the men of Penuel, when I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor with their army, about 15,000 men, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east. For there had fallen 120,000 men who drew the sword. And Gideon went up by the way of the tent dwellers of Noba and Jagbiha and attacked the army, for the army felt secure. And Zeba and Zalmunna fled, and he pursued them and captured the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and he threw all the army into a panic. Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle by the accent of Harry's, and he captured a young man of Succoth and questioned him, and he, wore, and he wrote down for him the officials and the elders of Succoth, seventy-seven men. And he came to the men of Succoth and said, Behold, Zeba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are exhausted? And he took the elders of the city, and he took thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them taught the men of Sakoth a lesson. And he broke down the tower of Penuel and killed the men of the city. Then he said to Zeba and Zalmunna, Where are the men whom you killed at Tabor? And they answered, As you are, so were they. Every one of them resembled the son of a king. And he said, They were my brothers the sons of my mother, as the Lord lives. If you had saved them alive, I would not kill you. So he said to Jether, his firstborn, rise and kill them. But the young man did not draw his sword, for he was afraid because he was still a young man. 
Then Ziba and Zalmunna said, Rise yourself and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and killed Ziba and Zalmunna, and he took the crescent ornaments that were on the necks of their camels. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And Gideon said to them, Let me make a request of you. Every one of you give me the earrings from his spoil. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a cloak, and every man threw it in it earrings of his spoil. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments and the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, and besides the collars that were around the neck of their camels. And Gideon made an ephod of it and put it in his city, in Orpha. And all Israel whored after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his family. So Midian was subdued before the people of Israel, and they raised their heads no more, and the land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Jorabel, the son of Joash, went and lived in his own house. Now Gideon had seventy sons, his own offspring, for he had many wives. And his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, and he called his name Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of Joash his father at Orpha of the Abiezrites. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the Baals, and made Baal Beriath their God. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. And they did not show steadfast love to the family of Jerobal, that is, Gideon, in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. Wow, I mean, here we see we see Gideon go and complete this mission that God has given him. With these 300 men, he has found the heads of, of Midian, and he's found um, Ziba and Zamuna. And once he captures them and he kills them, we have peace throughout the land. And so there's this great victory that God has done by the hand of Gideon with just 300 men over a large army, over the people that have oppressed them. And when this is all finished, they, they decide, you know, Gideon says, I'm not going to rule over you. My sons aren't going to rule over you. God is the one who rules over you. So far, so good. And then he says, give me some of your gold earrings. And everybody gives him earrings. And he makes this golden ephod from it. And this ephod becomes a stumbling block for Gideon and his family and everybody. They whore after it. They worship it. They, they do something that they're not supposed to do because they now make an idol out of this ephod. So we see from the, the victory that God has given and even the good confession from Gideon uh, that God should be their king. We see the seeds of defeat that happen from the abundance that's given at the end. You know, sometimes we are most susceptible, you and I, to sin in our lives after we have defeated great sin in our lives, right? We, we had this great temptation that we've overcome, and then we just kind of go, and then with that, that exhaling, and we think that, that that testing is over, something smaller trips us up. Right. And, and we find ourselves, wait, I just I just had this great victory. How could this happen? And, and the thing is, we are often the victims of our own success. That when we have success, we take the victory of ourselves and we forget God in the midst of all of that. All the things that that were warned in this passage, God wants the credit for it all, but he also doesn't want us to forget him. And we're reminded in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12, a very sober reminding, right before we're talked about the temptation that, that happens to every sing, single one of us, there's a warning that happens. And it says this in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, therefore let any Anyone who thinks that he stands, test, take heed lest he fall. In other words, you and I need to be dependent upon the Lord, not just when we've had these great victories, but even in these times between these great victories where we could let down our guard so easily and let sin come back into our lives. This is what happened to Gideon. This is what happened to him and his family. And they created this ephod and they created this worship environment to something other than God. And yet, 
me and you were susceptible to the same things. There are some days where we might be greatly tempted or we've done something amazing for God and we had this great victory and then we kind of let down our guard and something trips us up. And my prayer for you is that you and me be very careful thinking that we stand very firm, even on good things that have happened, lest we become susceptible to falling over something simple because we think we've got this. We need to be dependent upon God at all times, lest we fall. That's my encouragement for you, and that's my reminder to myself today. And my prayer is that we would acknowledge God in all of our ways this day, that he would get the glory, whether those things are great or small or anything in between, so that we don't fall. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day, and we will talk with you again tomorrow.